Pacific War, the most extraordinary war in modern history. A giant conflict between the Japanese Empire and the United States of America, spanning half the entire Earth from San Francisco to the fringes of India. Soldiers from both sides fighting on the most brutal terrain the nature has ever offered, from the swampy and malarial jungles of Papua to the stinking, sweltering sands of volcanic Iwo Jima. Modern and lethal technologies prevailed in the depth of the seas, on the surface, the land and in the air. Eventually, it brings about a nuclear tragedy the first time ever in human history. Tens of millions perished and it marks an unhealed genocide of a massive scale on civilian populations. It all started as imperialism encroached the lands of the Far East, subjugating its people and exploiting its resources for their greedy needs. In the early 1900s, Japan was becoming an emerging great power in the global stage thanks to her Meiji restoration. With its burgeoning 70 million people crammed in small islands and having only limited natural resources, Japan cast her eyes upon the immediate neighbor, China. But Alice, China was a melting pot for Western imperialism, being divided and subjugated by the British, American, German and other Western interests. Its government was completely corrupt and its population lethargic due to widespread use of narcotics, endorsed and supplied by the British Empire, while at the same time the threat of communism was at China's doorstep in the north. Seeing this pathetic scene of enslaved Asians in Asia, Japan sought to eradicate Western imperialism, while at the same time bringing her own agenda to the fore. Japan's attempt in leveling herself on par with Western powers was not taken lightly by the British and American empires. Seeing their colonialistic interests were disturbed in China, the Western powers imposed humiliating sanctions against Japan. When Japan sought for racial equality treaties, she was rejected cold. When Japan sought for armament equality treaties, she was again rejected cold. Japan was then more determined than ever to uproot Western enslavement and give back Asia to the Asians. Japan expanded its influence on the Chinese mainland, setting up a buffer government in Manchuria as a bulwark against communism from the Soviets in the north. It also began occupying large swaths of Chinese economic and industrial centers. The United States of America was in fury at this blatant disregard of their influence in China. She was determined that Japan shall not be a big player in the world stage. And this, in the late 1930s and early 1940s, the United States of America began imposing impossible demands that served both to humiliate Japan and force her to its knees. These sanctions were so harsh that it shook the Japanese economic and industrial capabilities at its core. With the absence of oil, scrap iron and aviation fuel from abroad, Japan began counting the days of her destruction. In early 1941, the United States froze all foreign assets and money that Japan was using to buy raw materials from abroad. It was a severe blow to the Japanese Empire, considering she had no natural resources of her own in the tiny archipelago. For this crippling embargo, she began envisioning an Asia called Prosperity Zone, a huge Asian bloc stretching from China, Korea, Indochina, Malaya, down to the Indonesian archipelago. In this bloc, all Asian countries shall work together for the advancement and prosperity of the region. When the US finally demanded, in the famous Hull Note of 1941, that Japan must renounce all its territorial gain, 
It was a final blow that Japan could peacefully take. Her patience had dried up, and for the survival of the empire, she resolved for war. In war lies deceit, and in war lies gamble. The Japanese Empire was fully aware that taking a stance of war against the might of the United States was a recipe for disaster. But she had no choice. War was the better choice. In peace would lie the humiliated and subdued nation, with all the restrictions and enslavement from the Western powers. In war, at least, she thought, she can bleed the United States enough to force her toward acceptable terms. Victory for the Japanese had always been snatching an agreeable terms from the enemy, not vanquishing nor destroying it. With a predictable attack toward Pearl Harbor, Japan sought to disable the might of the United States Navy in a single stroke. Then quick victory upon quick victory followed as she conquered the British Malayan Peninsula, the mighty fort of Singapore, and the Dutch bastion at Bandung. It all seemed so fine and dandy as the empire expanded thousands of miles in the Pacific unopposed. But it was just the beginning. The beginning of a horrible disaster. Once the United States switched its gaze from Germany toward Japan, the empire was crumbling like a house of cards. In mid-1942, Japan began tasting the bitter reality of defeat as her mighty fleet was knocked out of the New Guinean waters in the famous battle for the Coral Sea. From then on, it was a string of defeat after another. Her troops were battered, destroyed, and isolated in the jungles of Guadalcanal and New Guinea. The once mighty Imperial Army soldiers were now famished and rotting in the wet jungle. Unable to secure logistical supplies, they resorted to eating grass, lizards, rats, and even human flesh. It was the most terrible scene. In 1943, as the jungle wars in the New Guinea proper raged on, the United States began resting key Japanese bases in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. It was an island hopping strategy. They would bypass strongly garrisoned islands and directly inching closer toward the Japanese home island. Eventually, in 1944, all hope seemed lost for Japan, as the enemy began the invasion of the Philippines, effectively sealing the vast natural resources from the Dutch Indonesia. At this late stage in the war, Japan had no chance of fighting a conventional war against the United States. She was just so utterly outnumbered and outwitted by the American forces. And this was born the concept of kamikaze. Suicide aircraft laden with heavy explosives crashing themselves upon enemy ships. In the late 1944, Japan no longer had reserves of professional fighting soldiers and pilots. They were all but annihilated in the Battle of Attrition. Green, inexperienced pilots abound. In the fierce battlefields of the Philippines, even a skilled pilot had a great chance of not returning to base once he sallied forth toward the enemy. It was even all the more difficult to score a hit against US ships using the usual bomb delivery methods. With kamikaze operations, all pilots would not return anyway, but the chances of hitting and sinking enemy ships were greatly increased. It was a new tactic so extreme that even the Japanese were reluctant to adopt. But once set in motion, it became a national obsession. This is their stories, the unsung kamikaze heroes who sacrificed their life for the empire they loved so dearly. This is the story of their coming to terms with fate and death. This is the story of the loved ones left behind, the wives, the parents, and the children. And above all, this is the story of reminder of the greatness of human values in extraordinary situations.